Good morning. Welcome to Battle Branch this morning. Uh, good to be in God's house. It's good to be wherever you are this morning. Um, our pastor is going to be gone for a little while on a trip. Uh, Brother Doug Gopi is going to be bringing the message this morning. Uh, so remember him in your prayers. Remember our pastor. Uh, a lot of times he goes on these hunting trips and he comes back uh, really rejuvenated. So just keep him in your prayers. Keep all those that are not with us in your prayers. Uh, keep the country in your prayers and keep your church in your prayers. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements. There's going to be a nativity scene and play put on by the children of Battle Branch Baptist on Wednesday, December the 23rd at 7 o'clock p.m. So the Wednesday night service is going to be the nativity scene and play by the children. And if you have a child that wants to participate, sign up with your child's Sunday school teacher or Kaylin Gregg by December the 6th if you'd like to participate. And we're going to have another nativity scene. It's going to be a live nativity scene. It's going to have camels, all the nativity animals that uh, you usually see in a nativity scene. Uh, we're going to have those, and it's going to be a drive through And it's going to be Sunday, December the 20th, between 6 and 9 p.m. So you'll be, I don't know exactly the route, uh, but it's going to be a, a laid out route where uh, you and uh, the community that comes to look at it will be able to just drive through. And I think we're also going to have the, the radio transmitter on so we can play some things via their car radios at the same time. Um, do we have any birthdays this week? Bobby? Any more? <laughs> One? Two? Three years old? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy Any anniversaries? Tommy and Peggy. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. How many, Peggy? Fifty-three. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we 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 have a lot of folks in the church that do a lot of things that, uh, and they just quietly go about their business and do it. Uh, and and we have a lot of those here. Uh, but Karen Talley, I want to thank you for these beautiful decorations. Uh, I thank. I don't know if you had help or not. Did you? Well, for you and all those that helped, thank you so much for that. <laughs> this morning we have special singing. So, Janice, you come on and. Good morning. Uh, Thad kind of sprung this on me this morning, but um, the Lord, the Bible says, be instant in season and out. So just pray for me. I feel like this is what the Lord has uh, laid on my heart to do. Um, I'm going to do probably two songs and possibly three. Um, and I'm just going to go from one song to the next. And it's sort of like a lineage from jesus's birth and what we're thankful for when i saw all these beautiful decorations you know um 
it helps you re helps remind us what we're celebrating this season. And uh, David and I were talking on the way this morning, and neither one of us have really had great Christmas memories in our past, but um, we always need to remember that it's for Jesus, and that's the main reason. That's the only reason that we celebrate. So pray for me as I try to do this and listen to the words because this Christmas song right here really is a song of today. So pray for me. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth good will to men from heaven's all gracious King, the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come, with peaceful wings unfurled and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world above its sad and lowly plains they Blessed angels sing. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angels' strain have rolled to thousand years of wrong and men at war with men hear not the love song which they bring oh hush the noise ye men of strife and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old. When with the ever clinging years shall come the time foretold when the whole heaven and earth shall own the prince of peace their king and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I For 
time won't matter anymore. View the land I'm longing for you. And so That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to praise then when we first begun Well, good morning. Isn't it great to be in God's house this morning? <clears throat> I want to thank everybody that came out today. I want to thank everybody that's watching on live stream. And I feel like I should have had a Christmas message this morning rather than a continuation of Thanksgiving. But I recall Wednesday night when the pastor was up here and he was preaching about uh, giving thanks in all things. And then I remember thinking Thursday about what we are thankful for. And it was so great to sit around the table with family and just be able to share our thanks and be able to share our love with our family and friends. But I looked into Strong's Concordance, and the word thanks is in the Bible 73 times. The word thanksgiving is in the Bible 27 times. And the word thankful is in the Bible three times. And I'm going to talk about some of that today. I'm going to read about three scriptures here that uh, I've chosen, and I pray that it'll touch somebody this morning, because the first passage I'm going to read, the Apostle Paul writes that we should joyously give thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Let's pray. Father, I just come to you this morning with a grateful heart, Lord. I thank you for your love and your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the forgiveness of sin, Lord. And Father, this morning I just pray that you'll use me, that you'll speak through me, Lord, that you'll embolden the spirit within me. And I just pray that you'll open hearts in the church this morning, Lord, and let someone that needs to hear the message of thanksgiving, I just pray, Lord, that you'll touch their hearts this morning. Father, let it be to your glory every word that comes out of my mouth. 
Father, it's about you, Jesus. It's not about me. Lord, we just love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. First, I'm going to read is in Colossians, and this is the one that Paul said we should joyously give thanks. It says, Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and covered and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. What a powerful, powerful scripture that is. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of Man. You know, my question to you this morning, one of my questions to you is, when's the last time that you gave joyous thanks to the Lord? You know, many times we get really excited when we're sitting around watching a football game. We get excited when we sit around and watch a motocross on the television or something. But we remain silent about the greatest and the best blessing that God sends to us. So often we take God for granted, folks. But as his children, we ought to be making praise to our Heavenly Father, a number one priority in our life. Do you know that God can take the air from the atmosphere right now? Do you realize that God can stop your breathing right now? Do you realize that we have so much to be grateful for when we get out of the bed each morning? We put our foot on the floor. We ought to be grateful that first we can touch the floor. Secondly, that we can stand up. Third, that we can see. We can smell the coffee brewing. All of that stuff we should be so thankful for, yet we take it for granted so many times. God chose us as his children to display grace through us. He sent his son to die as a sacrifice and Jesus took upon himself the penalty that we owed for our sin. Do you realize that you cannot pay for your sins? Do you realize that the pleasure you might think that you receive from your sinful nature, you can get rid of any time you want to? You can't, folks. The only way that you can get rid of it is through forgiveness from Jesus Christ. And that's something to be thankful for. Jesus took it upon himself just for you and I. He gave us a purpose for living and delivered us from our ruined, meaningless lives. I've shared with you many times of how meaningless my life was before I accepted Jesus Christ. I've shared with you many times that the first verse I ever remembered in the Bible was that Christ Jesus came to save sinners of whom I'm the worst. But you know, you can put your name in there also because each and every one of us are sinners. Don't you think that God deserves our thanks every day? He deserves our thanks every moment because he made a place in heaven just for you and I. What about you? Do you live in gratitude for God's precious blessings? Remembering to thank him for everything, or do you just thank him for material blessings? You know, so often we live in this materialistic world where so often that everything we get is an accumulation and we think that we're a little better than our neighbors or somebody because we have something new. But you know, the greatest gift that was ever given is God's salvation. He gave his son for you and I that if we believe in him, we should never perish, but have eternal life. Folks, our eternity started at our conception, and how we live it is up to us. God will not force himself upon us this morning. He will not force the love of his son upon us this morning. We have to choose, but he is there waiting patiently for each and every one of us to get on our knees and ask his forgiveness for our sins. 
and ask him to be Lord of our life. The Lord didn't place us on earth simply to accumulate all of these possessions and all of this wealth. He provided us with the gift of life so that we could glorify him every single day and reflect the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom we're supposed to be imitators of. If someone looked at you this past week, would they recognize a Christian? Did you show that you were an imitator of Jesus Christ this week? Take some time today to express appreciation to the Father for his many, many blessings. And most of all, praise him for the gift of his Son. And you know, let others know about it. And a good way of doing that, I found out quite some time ago, is if you pray out loud before your meal at a restaurant, you'll be surprised at how many people will come up and comment to you afterwards. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. But in that way, we are sharing the love of Jesus Christ to other people. We're not being ashamed of it. Jesus says, you'd be ashamed of me, and I'm going to be ashamed of you in front of the Father. Folks, this is serious. This is the most life-saving, life-giving thing in the world. It's God's Word. And you know, this Bible doesn't contain the words of God, this Bible is the word of God. We're going to go on to the next scripture. It's in Ephesians, and it says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved." and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in the kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. That is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Jesus Christ took us when we were living in darkness. He took us when we were sinners. He took us when we were so disobedient to God that no one would want us. But he loved us so much and he cleaned us up. He picked us up. He washed us of our sins and washed us with his purifying blood that Jesus Christ saved us. You know, you, you drive through the countryside and you... Imagine this old rundown shack. That's just, it's just destroyed. The windows are all boarded up. There's graffiti written all over it. Grass has grown. Decades of neglect have been in the wood floors are warped and rotted. The paint's peeling off the walls like a bad sunburn or something. And there is a strong smell of bust and mildew. Now, is this a place you want to live? Is this a place you would want to live? I think not. But Isaiah says that all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all of us, all of our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Think of us being that old abandoned cabin down here. And think of how much God loves us. He came down here and renovated that old abandoned cabin and made a beautiful home out of it. Despite the fact that we were all dirty and filled with sin, God chose to intercede on our behalf and save us from the spiritual wrecking ball of Satan. Think about that this morning, folks. Oh, he could have left us to our own devices, and my own devices were sending me straight to hell, people. He could have forsaken us, just like someone did the old abandoned shack. But the God of the universe 
who is fit to occupy a mansion more glorious than man can ever build, chose to send his son to live in and through us. Every day for a Christian should be a day of thanksgiving. We should humbly reflect on God's countless blessings, his blessings of forgiveness, his blessings of salvation, and life itself. God is a giver of life, and he is also the taker of life. The question is, are you, re excuse me, are you ready that he is coming back? There's reasons that we give this Thanksgiving, and it's in Psalms 92, verse 1 through 5. And it tells us, it says, let me get it here. It tells us, it says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sounds. For the Lord has made me glad through your works. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Think about that. What motivates us to express gratitude to God? Is it because of something that he gives us or because of something that he's taken away from us? We often remember to thank him for something that's positive and happens in our life. But in the Bible we read in Thessalonians that we're to give thanks in all things which include difficult times as well as happier times. I might have shared this with you one time before, but I was doing some construction work one time, had a hammer in one hand and my thumb in the other, and they decided to meet. And I smashed my thumb, and it meat hanging down. I did like every good electrician. I grabbed electrical tape and put it around it, but I said, thank you, Lord. And the guy next to me said, are you crazy? I said, well, maybe, why? He said, why did you thank God? Because you mashed your thumb. I said, only mashed one finger out of five. So I'm thankful that I didn't smash the whole hand. But you know, it's hard to thank God in difficult times. When we feel that we've been betrayed by someone, when we feel that things are not going our way, then we like to blame other people and put to blame on someone that has absolutely nothing to do with it sometimes. There are a number of reasons why, no matter what we're going through, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. We just read in Psalms 92. Psalms 107 also tells us, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Even though Life may seem difficult. Our hope and joy remain because we serve the eternal God of love. And our gratitude magnifies the Lord. When we are grateful in bad times, when we are thankful, when we're at a deathbed or something and we're giving God glory, we are magnifying his love for each and every one of us. He is glorified when we acknowledge his goodness and thank him for his continual blessings. But God is also pleased when in difficult times we obediently thank him. Thankfulness reinforces our faith, folks. When we mention how God has met our needs, how God has protected us, and how he has answered our cries for help, our trust in him is strengthened. Our spirit rejoices when we dwell on who the Lord is. Do you know the Lord this morning? It is easy to be grateful when we receive something we have, not, we have desired for a long, long time. But God wants us to express thanksgiving in everything. Offer him thanks this week. You know, it's, God says, I'll give you everything according to my will that you need, if you'll be obedient to me. I want you to think about someone getting a brand new car from their parents or grandparents or something, 
something they've wanted for a long time. And the grandparents said, well, all you have to do is keep it serviced and keep it clean. Can you see the pleasure and the happiness in that grandchild's eye or that child's eye when you give him that vehicle? But think about the next time you see the vehicle. Because of gratitude of that kid, that car is going to be so shiny. That car is going to come in as beautiful as it was when it left. And that grandchild is going to be just as happy, going to give you the same praise, hugs, and kisses as it did when you gave it to it. Do you realize that's what we should do with God? Because God has given us something much greater than a new car. He has given us salvation. He has given us a right to live. He has given us everything that a human being could ever ask for. In Ephesians 5, 15, 20, it says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father in everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When someone gives us that gift, we should be thankful. We should be thankful to God in every gift he gives us every day. God tells us in James 1.17, he says that all gifts are from him. And we just read in Ephesians 5.20 to give thanks to the Lord for everything. How do we do that? Well, Ephesians told us we do it out of sound. We do it out of song. We do it out of worship. We give thanks by living a holy life as a response to God's goodness and to his faithfulness. We should honor him with our obedience. Paul tells us in Romans 12, 1, he says, Present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to the Lord, because this is your spiritual act of worship. Are you presenting your body as a living sacrifice? Are you being transformed by the evil world that we live in? Or are you loving God the way you're supposed to and giving thanks this morning? If we're truly grateful for what we receive, we'll gladly share our time. We'll gladly share our gifts and our resources. And it's easy to become really possessive of what we claim to be ours, forgetting that it's actually from God. Every single thing that we have is from God. Why? Should we not give him thanks this morning? Why should we not give him thanks every moment of every hour? Take time today to identify some of his many blessings in your life and offer him heartfelt thanks. You know, it's easy to say thank you, but it's more difficult for a heartfelt thanks. Thank him for sending his son to this dirty place called earth to pay the price of our sins and to judge us not guilty. Thank him for your family and your friends and for fellow believers. Thank him for our nation, our country, and do it from the heart. Jesus is coming back, folks. He's coming back. But before we can give him all of these heartfelt things, we need to have a personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ in order to give him the things that he deserves. I'm going to ask Jamie to come up. I'm going to close in a moment. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Do you know him this morning? Do you have that personal relationship with him? This is a confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he'll give it to us.
according to his will. Many Christians lack this kind of assurance, and it affects their perspective of life. If you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, your life on this earth is going to be miserable unless you have chosen heaven. It's difficult to experience the joy of the Lord if you doubt your eternal salvation. Doubts about your salvation could come from several places. We cannot be assured of our salvation if we've never trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Folks, I pray that everybody that hears my voice, whether it's on live stream this morning, whether it's in this church, whether it's in the parking lot, wherever it is, I pray that you have the same assurance of eternity that I do this morning. You may need assurance when you trust your personal feelings rather than God's. Folks, we need that assurance of salvation. Unconfessed sin in our life can interfere with our relationship with God. But God is faithful and just. He says, if you confess your sins, I'll forgive your sins. But do we do it? Confessing our sin keeps us in close relationship with God. But sin will separate us from God. Disobedience usually leads to doubt. If you're disobedient to God, then you are doubting God because God only gives us one command, to be obedient. And you say, but he requires so much. He does, but he gave so much also. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, for each and every person sitting in this room. Each and every person at the sound of my voice on live stream, he gave his life for you this morning. But do you love him and are you thankful for what he did? As a Christian, we can confess our sins daily. And we need to confess our sin as soon as we recognize it. And what is sin? Going against God's will. And what is confession? just agreeing with God that we know that it's a sin. Folks, it is so simple if you don't have a relationship with Jesus to get one this morning. It is so simple this morning that we can confess our sin and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We read in 1 John, it says, if we claim that we be without sin, we deceive ourselves. We are sinners, folks, saved by grace. But it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But if we claim that we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar. Do you want to call him a liar this morning? Do you want to confess your sins this morning? I ask you all to stand, please. The altar's open if you have any reason to come. Whether it's something just to give God thanks for or something that you need to get right with God this morning because you know something, there may not be an afternoon today. Jesus Christ may come back this love. very moment. If the pen of and are you ready? Could write every day, I can't make that choice for you. This world I cannot save you this moment. But I know who can. And his name is Jesus. Oh, I want you to know that if you've never ever accepted Christ as your Savior, just come to this altar this morning. Deacons will be happy to pray with you. I'll be happy to pray with you. We have so much to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. We take it for granted so much of the time. God, forgive us of our sins. Do you know that God loves you so much this morning? God's so good 
God loves you this morning. And do you know that he has given us a choice of eternity? And we're going to spend it one place or another. In the pits of hellfire. Or in a mansion on streets of gold with our Lord and Savior. God has been the choice is yours. It's so easy. It's that easy this morning, folks. I have been blessed. Do you know him this morning? Do you love him this morning? Do you have that relationship with him this morning? I ask that you bow your heads. Father, we come to you with gratitude. We come to you thanking you for your forgiveness of sin, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that anyone that is hearing my voice, if they don't have a relationship with you, Lord, I pray, Father, that they get on their knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life and be my boss. Take control of my life. I can't live like this anymore. I need you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for this church. We thank you for the congregation. We thank you for our pastor. We just ask a special blessing on him this morning. And Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory in everything that we say and everything that we do. Thank you for loving us, Lord, and thank you for allowing us to love you. And we give you praise and honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay, church, I can't say that you're dismissed, but I mean, I can say you're dismissed. I can't say you're free to go because that's what Madison says to you all the time. So at this time, we are dismissed. I pray that you have a great afternoon. I pray that you come back Wednesday night for our services. And I pray safety on our pastor and his wife. So God bless you and thank you for coming.